What's up? So, I've got these three beasts of a knife right here. And if you're watching, you surely read the description, but I'm going to compare these three knives. I've got the Efengro EF905 in 14C28N and titanium. And I've got the Tucson TS346 in D2. And it is also a titanium knife, obviously with the anodization there. And then I've got the Zero Tolerance ZT0308 in CPM 20 CV. And so somebody commented on a video and it got me thinking what could I compare some of these knives to? So I picked this one up and I had this one. And so I thought, let me do a quick rundown of these three knives, kind of side by side, uh, and run through a couple of things and talk about the differences. Uh, are there other big knives? Sure. I mean, come on, man. There's so many knives nowadays and so many manufacturers, but I mean, these are the three that I got, and uh, so I'm going to run through them. So I, I think the first thing I wanted to do was kind of describe the knife and the action. So on the Efengro, uh we already know that it's titanium and 14C28N, but the action on this, um, you've, you've got two ways to get this one out. you got the flipper tab in the back, which this thing just launches. Of course, the weight of that blade um, and the bearings in here, the bearings in this knife are massive, wonderful, big cage steel bearings. Uh, this thing rocks out, and I know you can kind of hear it both ways. Yeah. This thing, no hesitation coming. You can thumb flick it. Um, takes a bigger hand, I think, because I feel like I'm just kind of on the edge of being able to do that. But I also can spidey flick this one. You know, I'm putting a little wrist into it. Don't have to, but it's just, it's a big, heavy knife. So you've got a few ways to deploy it. I'd call this action smooth and confident um, and drop shut for sure. Uh, the lockup's good. Close to 50% in there. And the access to this lock bar is is pretty good. Um, it's not hard to get in there. I'm not pressing my thumb real hard. The pressure in there isn't tough. So I, I'd say the access to the lock bar is good. The Tucson. Uh, TS346. It's uh, titanium uh, scales with a D2 blade. Uh, you've got two ways to get this one out, and that's a thumb flick and the spidey flick. Now, I'll say on this one, I actually have two of this knife. Um, okay, hold on. Let me find the other one. Okay, it was in my pocket. But I have two of this one because this anodized requires them to polish this titanium really smooth. Well, I I was curious enough about the knife that I wanted to get one that wasn't polished. So I bought this one as well. The reason I'm doing this one and not this one in the comparison is simple. This one's been worked more than this one as far as the action. So this one's a little smoother, but I can still thumb flick this one and sp spidey flick it. Now I failed both times, but I'll do it one more time and not fail. So there it rolls out. And there it goes out. So the action on these, it's got foster, I don't know if they're foster, but it's bronze washers in there. And so in order for that to smooth out, you just have to work that action. And the more you work it, the more those those washers polish up in that uh, against the blade and the frame, the scale. And it just gets smoother and smoother. I can tell you from when I first got it to now, it's completely different. So, um, but this one runs better. 
Um, would I say this is more my favorite knife out of the two? I would choose this one, I believe. It's just such a heavy-duty knife. This one looks amazing, but this one's got better action. But now that we've covered the action on this one, I'm probably... See, this one almost falls shut now. Just a little couple of shakes. Um, so a lot better on this one. But now that we've covered the action on it, I'm going to set this one aside and run this one. So... Uh, what else was I talking about with that? You've got the action. So the action on this one with the washers, it's smooth. It's improving. Um, and I'm confident that it's just going to get better and better. The lockup's about the same, almost 50%. The access to this lock bar, they've cut this out. They've created a space here to grab onto. But it takes more effort than the Ethan Grove. Yeah, the access to the lock bar is not quite as smooth, but it's not anything that I would complain about. I mean, in all things considered in the size of the knife, the access on it's just fine. It's just not quite as good as that one. Um, let's go to the ZT. So the zero tolerance. Um, might as well cover the access to the lock bar. So... It's cut out here, it's raised over here, so the access is very easy. I, I'm going to say that it's not quite as easy as the Ethan Grove. The Ethan Grove is super easy to get to. The tension on the lock bar is, you know, it, it's just this one's the easiest, but this one isn't bad. Surely wouldn't complain about it. The action overall, there's only one way to deploy this one. This one had two, the Spidey Flick and the Thumb. This one was three, yeah, the spidey flick and the thumb, and then the uh, flipper tab on the back. This one just has a flipper tab. It's good jimping. It's positioned high. It's nice in the knife, and that blade slings out. No issues, and it's drop shut. So wonderful ac action in this. It's on bearings, uh, just as smooth as silk. So I would describe this as definitely smooth drop shut action. And very confident with that action. I'd say I'm very confident with this action. Um, very tight knife. Tolerances are wonderful in it. Same as this one. Um, this one, I'm going to say it's confident, but I don't know that I'd say it's very confident. Um, it's good. I definitely don't have any complaints with it. It's just, it's a feel thing. This one just feels slightly different than this one um, but this one feels completely different because of the washers this one is super tight um, all right so the lockup lockup solid on all three knives right around 50 percent um, the deployment got triple double single so the grip let's start over on this side the grip and the texture so the texture of this material is I mean, I'm going to say it's maybe a 5 on a 10 scale of grippiness. It's actually got mini texture within that texture. So there's these lines, but then there's more texture down in there. So nice and grippy. Kind of the same concept going on in the titanium on the other side, but that's a firm grip. The jimping is nice, and it does provide... It does provide grip for the thumb in in a strong grip. The strong grip, you you sort of can choke up on this one, but you, you're breaching into the tip of this blade. So I don't know that I'd recommend that. The strong grip here is very confident. Yeah, no issues with the strong grip on this one. Um, if you were putting in work with this one, I'd feel very confident with that strong grip on that one. No hot spots in this knife. I, I like the way it feels. It feels good in the hand. Um, opening and closing, it's nice. like it. Uh, the Tucson, it's got a smooth texture. There's not, there's really no grip here at all. Compared to the polished one, this one's better. It's got a little more grip to it. Um, as far as the grip, there's no hot spots in there. I don't know. You're definitely not as locked in with this one as you are on this one. This one will lock you in. Um, 
would I be as confident with this one um, as far as protecting my hand from this blade? I absolutely would not. Yeah, so as far as like putting in forward work, the the jimping on this, it's aggressive, but it's not grippy. It's so big and kind of smoothed off that counting on that to help provide a strong grip is not, it's not happening. Now on this one, you can choke up. So there is the opportunity to do some finer work up here and then the thumb rests nice there. So yeah, detail work, maybe a little better here than here, than the ZT. I, I think so because of the ability to choke up there. It's got some jimping back here. It's kind of grabbing. And then some of the jimpy here as well, jimping. Um, yeah, so smooth, not near as confident on the grip here versus here. This one, the Ethan Grove, another smooth knife. Smooth, you know, there's not, there's no texture here at all. So, uh, it's got jimping on the top. It's got jimping on the back, on this back spacer. So, in a strong grip, thumb forward. Um, this jimping, I, you know, it's odd. It's not as grippy as that, but it grips in a different way. It's so big, but it does provide some stability. Um, the, when you're locked into a strong grip here, these grooves fit well for my hand. Um, and then my finger locks against this aggressive jimping here. So, uh, in a strong grip with this knife, um, I wouldn't have any concerns about riding over into this blade. None whatsoever. Yep. Nice, strong grip. No hot spots. It's comfortable in the hand. Um, I like it. So I, it's not textured and as grippy as the ZT, but it's got a good grip. I like it. Um, we'll start to wrap up. So pocket clip. Um, we'll start on this end again. I, you know, there's nothing fancy about these ZT clips, but I will say this is a one hand in the pocket and it's a great grip rides. Well, I mean, the amount of knife that sticks out is about that much. So you do have some exposed knife, which I mean, doesn't bother me, but if you're looking for a deep carry, not quite on the ZT, I'll leave that up so we can look at it on the Tucson. So, very aggressive pocket clip. The, the clip itself isn't so bad, but then you've got this milled in, this relief for the lockup, that this could grab your pocket. So, I, I can tell you that in order to make this pocket clip work, I had to modify it. I had to take it off and take some of the tension out of it. If you look, I, you almost can see space underneath it now so now that i've modified it i can do a one-handed insert and a one-handed exit um, but it as well is not a deep carry clip as that's how much that one covers so it's about the same as the zero tolerance as far as clip and uh, pocket depth so there's that clip um the clip on the Ethan Grow. Uh, it's a one-handed pocket clip, and it goes in really well. It holds really well, and it comes out really well. Um, no issues with it at all, and it's a little deeper. So it's you know, it's it ex it only exposes a really small knife in your pocket. Is kind of what that represents. Little does it know that there's this behemoth underneath it. So, so yeah, I mean, maybe the best pocket clip out of the bunch here, as far as in and out of the pocket. Um, okay, so uh, wrapping up. Uh, sharpness. Uh, let's start in the middle. So the sharpness on this Tucson on this D2, it came really, really sharp. I did put a strop on it and now it's super sharp. I mean, I, you know, I'm just going to cut a quick piece of paper with each of these. So this one is 
really sharp after a strop. Um, no concerns with that blade whatsoever. Um, the zero tolerance came super sharp, but I put a little strop on it, and now it is wicked sharp. Yeah, absolutely, and I would expect it to be. The Ethan Grow, it came sharp, but it would not cut paper. If you watch the review on it, it wouldn't cut paper. So I put a strop on it, and it is way better, which isn't saying much. So this blade needs to be reprofiled. I mean, it's sharp, but it's not sharp like these are sharp straight from the factory with a little strop. Those are, are wicked sharp. This particular knife, so you see if, I, if I'm if i patient with it, I, I stropped it up, it'll cut, but I'm going to say it, it probably needs reprofiling because I stropped it pretty good to get it to that. Um, that was stropping it and checking it and stropping it and checking it, so I definitely had to put my work in on it. Um, Price, yeah. Let's let's talk numbers real quick. So, I, and none of these numbers are a mystery. All this stuff's readily available. But the ZT is a three hundred dollar plus knife. Yep, and I mean, anywhere from three twenty five to I mean, depends on where you find them. But yeah, I mean, I think on sale you can catch them around three twenty five. Uh, I've seen them. 375 who knows so but it's definitely a 300 dollars plus knife the tucson this particular model the other model is a little more but this particular model in the uh black stone wash finish d2 titanium scales on ebay i picked this up like right at 80 dollars so um, if you wanted to buy it now, I think White Mountain has this, it's under $100. It may be like $95 or $98. I'm, I'm not sure about that, but it's under $100 for this one on White Mountain. Um, the Ephangro. So this was a recent acquisition. I bought it just to do this review. I was looking for a big knife. I wanted to get something from Amazon next day. And so this one was the one I picked. So next day from Amazon, this one was $80. So if you stack them up price-wise, these are about the same price, a little better steel, same titanium. Not sure if... The quality measures up. The knife came way sharper. Um, this one in and out of the pocket better. I'd say that this one is at least, at least two ounces heavier than this one. And maybe even more than this one because I think this one's maybe seven ounces. This one's close to 10, if not 10. And this one may be right at around 7 ounces as well. 6 point something or 7. So weight wise, this one's, this one's the monster. So which one would I pick? Well, obviously if I had the budget, I this would be the knife. If, if I had the money and I was looking to get a big knife, I would buy the Zero Tolerance. Uh, 100%. This, as soon as you take this knife out of the box... You know that you bought a quality knife. Uh, it, this thing feels good in the hand. I'm not really a big knife guy, but this one goes in my pocket occasionally. I just pull it out and go, I'm going to carry that next day or so. Um, I do like the Tucson. Uh, I do think it's a little on the high end for D2. If it had better steel... Um, this thing's such a beast. And this one, unlike the other two, this one can be locked out as a fixed blade with this pin. 
So, bam, now you have a fixed blade. There's no way for this to fail. So, were you going to chop with it? You know, I'm not really sure. But, you know, as far as a hard-use knife, it's not a bad feature, I guess, if you want to lock out the blade on it. Um, so, that's kind of an added thing. Um, it's got washers. So, you know, there's an argument to make as well. Let's say in a wet, dirty environment, this one may absolutely outride these two. Because you get these on a beach and some sand and salt water or something, and th these may not function anymore. You get that grit and dirt in those bearings. This one, by design, should continue to roll. So if I had the money, I'd pick this one. If I didn't have the money, these two are basically the same price. So the question becomes 14C28 Efingro or a D2 Tucson. Uh, this one's got the bearings and the amazing action. This one's got washers and not amazing action. Um, I am confident it'll get better. So which would I pick out of these two? I think I'd pick the Tucson. Um... I, and I think the reason I would do it, and these will be my final words on the video, the reason that I would pick this one is because this one is just too much. It's really big and it's really heavy. So it might not be a fair comparison. I know Ethan Grow has some others that are big large knives i don't know if they're as big as this one but in the end i think i would pass on this one because it's heavier it's just bigger the profile's bigger and i think i would go with the lesser steel and the non-bearings and i would do this tucson so there's my comparison let me know what you think in the comments i appreciate you watching